Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys, and today I'm out in the backyard. We're gonna talk about backyard bird photography right after this. This is a video I've wanted to do for a while. In addition to being a bird photographer, I'm also a little bit of a native plant enthusiast. I do a lot of gardening at home, and over the past three or four years, it's been a big focus of mine. So I was kind of anxious to do a video about the backyard. So we're gonna jump right in here. Now I'm gonna do two videos on this. The first one is just really about setups and how to maybe set up an area for backyard bird photography. The second part is gonna be how to attract birds with plants. And we may touch on that a little bit today, but it won't be the focus of today. But I do also wanna make a note that this video was in part inspired by a desire to put out some content for people that may not be able to get out and explore. Uh, I'm very grateful that I have the ability to explore and, and hike and travel, and I, I like to do all of that. In fact, it's probably my favorite way to do photography. So I thought I'd just put together a video that might give you some ideas if you're unable to travel for any reason, um, or if you're just more comfortable shooting at home. Maybe get some ideas on how, to, how you can do this right in your own backyard. So let's just jump right in. You're gonna see my setup here. Behind me, I've got some rocks on one side, some fake rocks. And here I've got a little feeder. I'm gonna spin this around and I'll show you my setup back here where I've got a tripod, a stool, and then this lens coat blanket throw. And I love this thing. I use it for a lot of different purposes, but because I don't wanna have a permanent blind built in my backyard, this is really convenient. I can bring it out whenever I want, set it up in just a minute or two, uh, and I can sit here for an hour, hour and a half, and just photograph birds in the morning or in the evening. So that's kind of the way I, I set that up. Now, you'll also see the distance. I've set it up at pretty ideal distance for a four or 500 millimeter lens you're looking at around 20 feet away, uh, seems to be the ideal distance. Before we get into the setup here, I do wanna mention, I, I will break this video into three types of birds that I photograph when I'm doing backyard bird photography. The first are just year-round yard birds. Uh, these are my yard birds. They're here all year round, cardinals, blue jays. Um, those are the, the ones that are very, very reliable. They start to get used to the feeder, and you could see those every day. The second one are gonna be breeding birds. Those are birds that only come up for the summer and they breed around my property and then they go home. And for that, it might be things like wood thrush. I've got Baltimore Orioles here. That's very dependent on habitat. And then the third one are migratory birds. And those are really, really interesting. And I treat all three of these a little bit differently. The yard birds and the breeding birds are a little similar. Migratory birds are much different. So I'll, I'll touch on the differences of those in just a second after we talk about the actual setup that I've got on behind me. Let's start with the feeder. Now I use a, lots of different feeders. I use a tray feeder. So you can see the tray here, just a pole that's uh, staked in the ground. And when birds come into the feeder, they're gonna do a couple of things. They're generally gonna come from the top down. Now you can see I've also chosen an area that's under canopy. So I've got a catalpa tree that offers some protection so they feel nice and secure. They will almost inevitably jump down onto this top perch and then they'll start feeding down below. And I don't really care about the feeder, so I'm always focused on the perch. And the nice thing about this setup is I put some clamps on here and I can rotate it around. So I can put any perch on there that I want. If I've got a nice ornamental tree that I'm taking some cuttings from, I can use that. Um, so I can stage that with anything that I want uh, from my property. On the other side, I've got some very important things to talk about. So there's three rock looking uh, items here. On the far left, is a rock cover it's just a faux rock cover and that is housing the electrical so the electrical has to come from the house down to here it's all run underground and that powers a fountain uh, this fountain was given to me by a company called blue thumb a wonderful company to work with i've really really enjoyed this fountain i'll show you a couple of pictures right now that i've gotten from birds taken on that and i'll show you a couple more uh, toward the end and then over here the last one i've got is a of a bird bath. It's made by a company called Bushy Box and I like it because it looks it looks natural. You can see I've also put rocks in here so I can stage these just like I stage the feeder with different branches. I can stage this with with different things like rocks. Now I will also take some of my flowering plants and I'll drop those in here. I'll show you a picture um, where I put some flowering plants in here and it just adds a little bit of color. So again the nice thing about these these setups is you get a lot of variability you can create, you can, you can explore, and you can do different things right there in your backyard. Let's talk about those three categories of birds real quick. So when you've got feeder birds, or yard birds, they really are most interested in a feeder, and that's all you need. If you're interest, interested in photographing those types of birds, I would recommend just a feeder with some ability to set up perches. 
If you can get it near a tree, probably better. You may bring in some other birds rather than just the every regu uh, regular everyday birds. But if you can get it near some, some cover, it may, you may find it beneficial. The other thing, because I don't like shooting in the bright sun, uh, these plants also offer some shade. So I like, I like shooting in lower light and shade. Now for those, those breeding birds, you're gonna find that they will sometimes explore the feeder, but not all birds are gonna eat seed. So a lot of these birds are eating caterpillars, worms, and insects. And because it's harder to supply a food supply for them, that's where water becomes really, really important. So what I'll notice is sometimes birds like the Baltimore Orioles or uh, the wood thrush, these are birds that probably aren't going to come in and feed here at the feeder unless um, you've got a specific need. So for example, Baltimore Orioles like oranges. You could absolutely put oranges down here and you would find your Baltimore Orioles here on a regular basis. But they will explore this water. So both uh, in the past I've had wood thrush, I'll show you an image there, where they were bathing in here almost every night, a pair of them. Now that last category, migratory birds, this is the one I really, really get excited about. And this is the one where I spend most of my backyard um, time looking for. With migrants, typically migrants are not seed eaters. So you could put out as many trays as you want. A lot of them aren't gonna come to feeders. What they might be attracted to is water. And that running water is really, really important. In, in fact, I found when I just had still water out here the first year, I got very few migrants. When I put a drip in last year, I got more migrants. And when I put the running water in, I got even more. It, the sound of running water really, really attracts them. Every yard is gonna be different. There are some people that are gonna live in apartment buildings, suburban setups. You may have very residential areas with very few trees. So kind of those you know, well manicured lawns. I live at the back of a residential area, so the front of my house is fairly tame. The back's a little wild. I actually have an edge of woods against my, my house. For migratory birds, that's a big deal. Migratory birds are typically going to find your larger trees to feed off of, and they're going to use those as a food source. If you only have flowers, there's not really a food source because their primary food source is caterpillars. So you're going to, you know, if you're on the edge of the woods, you have an, a huge advantage. And I would suggest in that case to try to get the water as close to the woods as possible. Those birds don't like to come out into the open, so they'll explore around the edges, but they're probably not going to come into your, your yard or close to your home. So if you can, again, if you've got water in any way, even a bird bath, just get it back here along the edge of the woods, put some feeders up there. The feeders may get activity, so other birds coming into the feeders, and then those migrants might come in to explore. I will show you a few pictures that I've captured this year during migration and also last year during migration. Probably the highlight for me this year was this little tiny ruby crowned kinglet. And uh, I was photographing at the feeder and all of a sudden he popped right into that running water and just started taking a bath in front of me. I was so elated because these are one of the smallest little songbirds that we have in North America. And to have them right here at my feeders and on my water was, was pretty, pretty cool. So I showed you a quick setup of how I do my backyard bird photography with a couple of tips in there. I'll list some of those tips over here for you and uh, encourage you to get out and explore. Now one of the tips at the bottom, you're gonna see one of the advantages over here that I've listed is the ability to experiment. And this is really, really, really big. One of the great things about backyard bird photography is you get some control over the environment, which is very different than when you go out into the woods to do photography. So take advantage of that. Rather than just shoot standard portraits at the feeder, play around with things like light, even focal lengths. You could do wide angle work. I'm gonna show you a picture here that I took with some wide angle remote setups. And I'm also gonna show you a couple of different lights that I used. And one of the great things about this is if it's your house, the sun rises in the same place basically every day. It moves a few degrees, but you know it's basically coming up and going down in the same area, which gives you an unbelievable opportunity to really master the light at your house. So I'm going to show you a picture here of a blue jay and every day the sun came up in the same area and this is shot backlit and I was able to use that really nice warm glow to take advantage of this feeder and I put the branch exactly where I wanted it, set the camera up exactly where I wanted it and I, I almost knew that I would get a bird there. I didn't know what the bird would be but I knew I would get something and in this case it was a blue jay and I really liked the way this one came out. So one of the big benefits of backyard bird beyond accessibility is just the ability to control and experiment and really know your property. 
So thanks for joining me today for Backyard Birds Part 1. Part 2, we'll talk about planting for backyard birds. Look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for your support on the channel. And as always, I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.